I'm Steven Schumacher. I work for Aero Electronics. My hobbies are snowshoeing, rafting, skiing, and I have a learning disability. When people come and meet me or other people with disabilities, I think need to act naturally, as in don't talk like them like a child and not using like, oh, you're so sweet. Oh, it, it, your, your son is, it, no, act like I'm a real human being and a regular adult. My name is Kim Brian Kellerman. Yes, I am at um, UNR, I am a student, and I'm a mentor for a new student who is living with me. So, yeah, I live on my own with two roommates I have in my life. So I'm walking by to others that your sister is retarded. It's not okay. It hurts my feelings and my heart. I'm Jonah Vandermeer. Um, at the moment, I'm going to uh, Truckee Meadows Community College to uh, get my degree in business and uh, communications to become a motivational speaker. Um, I love to bike ride, um, ski, uh, hike, dirt bike, um, basically whatever I set my goals to, I end up doing it. Um, and I am a double amputee. I don't like it when people, you know, treat me like I'm a child or I don't understand the concept of what they're trying to explain to me, which I've had that happen several times in my life, where people see me and they go, oh, well, he doesn't understand because he looks different or he talks differently. I completely understand what you're saying. My name is Russell Lehman. I'm a motivational speaker, author, poet, and advocate. Some of my hobbies include working out, learning, bettering myself as an individual and a man, and I happen to have autism, but autism doesn't have me. When I'm shutting down, I may come across as cold or distant. During these times, I just need you to reach out and ask me how I'm feeling. Hi, I am Jacob Arant. I am the statewide president of People First, the president of Winnemucca chapter of People First. I am, a, I am also on the governor's council for developmental disabilities. I enjoy camping, hiking, and fishing. Oh, by the way, I have a disability as well. I treat you with respect. You treat me with respect. Hi, I'm Ian Zayner. I go to UNR. Um, I love swimming. I am a huge Michael Jackson fan. Um, I I love um, Pokemon, and um, and I have a disability. Don't come a retarded. It offends me. Hi. I am Abraham. I am a woman. I am I am a woman. I I am I am a I am a man.
You don't look autistic. I don't look autistic? Well, because I don't have autism. Well, autism is a disability that you can't really see. The only way it bothers me is that there is ignorance in the world, but I mean, I, I just no, not really a concern of mine. If they want to know about my autism, then I'd be happy to, you know, tell them about it, but they're not, I mean, what am I supposed to do with, you don't look autistic? I mean, okay. Oh, every day is a challenge. Um, more so because people don't know I'm struggling. Uh, yeah, every single day I struggle uh, vehemently um, inside my brain, and it's agonizing. I just learn differently, and and I act differently to different things like sounds, um, no, loud noises, um, different objects, different people. Um, I have a hard time communicating. Um, I see different things in a different way um, than other people see. Can autistic people feel empathy? I can't speak for all autistic people, but I am on the spectrum. I can feel empathy, uh, too much of it. Uh, I'm, I like to say I'm hyposensitive when it comes to uh, physical pain, meaning I, I don't really feel a lot of physical pain, but I'm hypersensitive when it comes to emotional pain. Um, so I, I'm, an, I'm a very emotional creature. Just because I have autism, it doesn't prevent me from feeling emotions um, in any, any way, shape, or form. Uh, in fact, it's the exact opposite. I'm almost like an emotional burn victim. I, I'm very sensitive to emotions, uh, empathy, sympathy, whatever they may be. And as for me, I would say that I have no clue what empathy means, but as I know that for people who are autistic, I would say I know they go through very hard times. Why do you walk funny? Um, for me, you know, since I'm, I'm an amputee, it's a lot more different than someone who has legs. Well, I found that all people are different. How they walk doesn't really matter to me. And it's, it's who they are, who they are born, how they're born, and and that's how they were cre created. And a few people ask me, why do I walk funny? Well, why do you walk funny yourself? I, I see people walk in different ways, and the way they walk doesn't matter to me. Well, you know, there's times where I mean, I'll be walking at a mall or amusement park or something, and a kid will just randomly come up to me and start touching my legs, and they'll say, you know, what happened? Why? Why do you not have legs? Why are they different? You know, and I'll explain to them, you know, I, I've had some leg issues when I was about your age, and I couldn't walk, and so got brand new ones and turned into a transformer. So, when I was younger, I would go to uh, Wild Island, which is in Reno, and um, I'd be swimming without my legs, and I'd raise my legs up, and I'd yell out, shark, and all these little kids would just stop, and they'd run out and freak out, and, you know, basically got to pool to myself, so. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all I can remember, so, yeah. People with different syndrome aren't always happy. I sometimes are happy, but sometimes I, 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 I sometimes become emotional at some points, but mostly that if something doesn't go my way or um, does something like that, I sometimes can just like calm down and go with the flow. Blanket statements such as always being something aren't beneficial to society or individuals. Just because somebody has a label or a disability doesn't mean they're always gonna be this or that. They're gonna experience the ups and downs of life just like everybody else. Can people with intellectual disabilities have relationships? I would say yes, because if you're in a relationship, you feel love, 
For another person, I would say that being in a relationship feels good. You feel good for yourself and for other people as well. You know, when it all boils down to it, anybody on earth, any individual, animals have relationships. Anybody and any living thing can have a relationship. I, I, you know, I obviously, we're people too, so yes, we can have relationships, whether they be romantic or platonic. I think that people need to put more thought behind their questions and instead of wanting to gain knowledge about disabilities by asking specific questions, I think you should get to know the person with the disability and then just have the information flow out at a natural time. Pinpointing specific questions like this uh, puts the uh, person with the disability on the spot and it just you know doesn't really help in uh, erasing the stereotypes and stigma surrounding disabilities. They can really understand who you really are and really can understand how you feel and how, um, how the, there's a lot of things that we should do to help one another. I think relationships are beneficial in many different ways. Uh, you know, to give your best to somebody and have them give their best to you and to be able to grow, uh, if it's a romantic relationship, to be able to grow as a couple and as individuals at the same time and pushing each other to be the best people you can be. Uh, when it's friendship, you know, uh, having that sense of support and comfort and experiencing life at a, you know, a higher level of being when you're with somebody you truly enjoy spending time with. Relationships enhance our human experience. They uh, reveal what it means to be uh, a human, an individual, an individual with a disability. They give you insight into not only what you're capable of, but insight into who you are. And when you're in a relationship, whether it be platonic or um, romantic, you, you find out more about who you are deep down inside. And I think that's extremely beneficial for individuals and the whole of society altogether. People with intellectual disabilities are capable of working at a regular job and earn a regular wage. Hmm. Well, I think that's one thing for sure that all people think about. I work for a company called Air Electronics. Right. And I get a good amount of pay. I get equal benefits, I have equal rights. Um, I might be doing a simple job, but to me, it's a job that someone has to do and has to get done. <coughs> and when people think of people with disabilities, they think, oh, shelter workshops, well, or they can't do a simple task, uh, which is not true. Every person with a disability can do a simple task. I've been working for my job for almost f four years now, going on five, and for a person with a disability, keeping a job is very hard. I have a good supervisor that understands I have to work different hours than other people, but that doesn't mean very different to me. So, uh, people without disabilities have to work different hours. So to me, working with uh, having a disability and working with a company that is fast moving pace, I felt my difficulties, but at the end, it's a great day overall. I, I'm excited, I was motivated, I was able to work up, wake up early in that first day because um, I had to be at work at 5 o'clock in the morning and able to get myself ready, get, get going. Um, I'm ready. It was that, that moment where my company said, I, we want you here. And they didn't see me as much much with a disability as anything else and they opened the doors and that day after my first work I got home and I just felt so happy uh, excited to go back the next day and keep on going I'm going to uh TMCC, Trunking Meadows Community College, 
and uh, getting my degree in uh, business and communications and um, working on becoming a motivational speaker that we travel around the world and share my story about my disabilities and my experiences in my life where people will be, able, will be able to understand that even though that I've gone through so much that there's no excuse for them to give up on at least trying. I was at IIT um, at McQueen High School for about a year or so. We'd go around and fixing um, monitors that were broken down or CPUs that had to be replaced or um, ribbon cables that weren't fully connected and so we'd go around you know, each day to make sure everything was running perfectly before, you know, teachers or the students came in and, you know, made sure it was a great day and that there was no issues. So that was, that was amazing. It was fun. Those with intellectual disabilities can't live independently. No, they can. You know, I, I have my own place. I've been living there almost three years. Uh, I do my own grocery shopping. Uh, I do my own everyday chores by myself. Um, people with any disability can be independent, although they, they need help once in a while, but not all the time. I say that people should live on their own, like I am one now, because I have two roommates or at the house, which I, I did. I did my own groceries, make my own grocery list, Sometimes I don't need any help, but not with a parent, just myself. Parent, your parents not gonna, or guardian or people around you are not going to be around you as long as they are, they're around. I mean, they, one day will be gone and you need to rely on yourself and one, maybe one other family member, but all, overall, your parents are not going to be here as long as we are. An intellectual disability is a disease. I just don't know how to respond to these because they're so stupid. I mean, come on. I mean, come on. How? I don't know what's. An intellectual disability is a disease. You know, I would hope I would never come into contact with somebody like that who right. thinks that. I don't know. I feel like I don't even want to waste my energy addressing that. I hear you. It's so <laughs> inane. Exactly. But... I hear you. Um, I don't always need help with everything. Um, my parents are actually my guardians. They help me with my financial. They help me with home living, stuff mm -hmm. like that. So. I don't drive, so mom and dad take me places. I'm <laughs> Should I speak slowly or talk louder to you? Not at all, because I can hear people just fine. And if people say, do I need to talk louder to you? Say, no, I, I can hear just fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a lot of people <laughs> Can you have sex? <laughs> well, um, yes I can, um, but I'd rather not because I don't want to have kids. I was in a relationship a while back, but she was physically and mentally abusive towards me, and I just couldn't. We had a, we bought a house together, and 
It was just, it was horrible. Mm-hmm. And I just couldn't handle that much stress from somebody. Mm-hmm. So I left and then um, my fiance's ex-husband, Joel, passed away a couple years ago. And she had nobody and we just hooked up and two years later we we're doing great. Mm-hmm. They can be, yes. Mm-hmm. They can be very hard, yes. But I People call me the R word numerous times. It hurts me a lot, and it's just it's it's I can't even, I can't even talk about it so bad. I feel extremely offensive and. It's just, it hurts completely. I'm just tired of the lack of understanding and even when people do try to understand, they still can't understand unless they, they've lived it themselves. So I guess that's frustrating, knowing that no one will ever know what I go through personally, ever. You know, I won't know what you go through, ever. We only know what we right. go through. And that's maybe the most frustrating part is that lack of connection and being able to relate to somebody because no one will ever know what we go through, ever. And that's kind of disheartening, but it's also at the same time a, a challenge to be looked upon and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do this anyway, even though, yeah, no one will ever know what I go through, you know, I'm gonna speak out anyway because, it, you know, the only failure is in not trying. I was, um elected um, statewide president of Pew First in Nevada, and I'm also on the um, Governor's Council for Developmental Disabilities. What it means to me is that I, can, I feel like I can do a lot in the community from People First. That helps me a lot, like what I'm doing right now. Before People First, I could never do what I'm doing now. I could never speak up in front of people and introduce myself and what I'm doing right now. I could never do that before People First. 14 years ago, I... I it was terrified of the outside world. I, I would only speak to my parents and, you know, I had a severe speech impediment. So it's ironic to think how I went from, you know, an unintelligible, young, scared little boy to, you know, this confident young man who is more comfortable speaking in front of hundreds of people than I am one-on-one. And just to, to feel the vibe from the crowd and get my message out there and uh, I've been on a remarkable journey, and I'm finally climbing out of the deep valley I've been stuck in the majority of my life. And you know, I'm ready. I'm ready to get out there and you know, just uh, live life to the fullest, and you know, have a wild, wild finish. I would describe my disability uh, as a gift that was extremely hard to figure out how to open. Um, but once I figured out how to open it, I uh, you know, utilized the amazing positive aspects of it. And uh, the negative aspects I also u- utilized in um, learning to embrace my challenges because it you know, really does promote personal growth. So I would describe my bis- disability as uh, you know, a blessing in disguise, definitely, definitely, uh, you know, I, 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 there's no way I would ever say I didn't wish I had my disability. I, you know, I love it because it's made me into the man I am today. The one thing I wish that didn't happen with it when it comes to my disability is, uh, the effect it can have on, uh, my loved ones and on my, uh, family and friends. Seeing them see me go through a tough time 
That breaks my heart. Well, it's like Kevin Dance Dance Room is um, really good thing. It's, it's for your mind, and that way you can be smart at and, and try to get a job. The best thing I have in Dance Room is um, just have fun with it, because I'm born this way. I will not be the same person at all. No, I won't be the same person. No one trusts me like that. If I, I, if I don't have Dance Room, I'm just not to myself. If someone said an R word to someone's face like having Down them or Optimism, they, they should not say that. Because if, if, if this says something like R word to someone's face, had Autism or um, Down Syndrome, is um, I don't want anyone to say the R word. It's just hurtful and breaks my heart. If someone says that to me, I will not be the same. It hurts my heart, and sometimes your heart will be broken. And it's not cool. So, and when I don't know that the R word, so I don't I appreciate that. I have um, what they call fetal alcohol. And when it was, when I was, when I was a baby, my birth mom um, drank when she, when I was in her. My disability is extremely mild than others. The only thing I have a problem with is money management. But other than that, you couldn't tell at all. My mom and dad are both of my guardians now. They help me with my finances when I need help. They'll help me balance a checkbook, whatnot. Without them, I couldn't do anything with my finances at all. I can't join the military. <laughs> I, um, I'm happy with it. It's something that was part of me my whole life, and I just go on with life and just deal with it. I have a learning disability. It's just almost like a very slow computer, and it's hard. When you have a slow computer, it's hard to download stuff and it's hard to communicate and hard to, it's challenging. Um, I have a hard time reading, math, any topic, really. It's hard for me to learn something, a simple thing. But that doesn't really mean that I can't not learn. I can learn. 
Um, but I just learned differently. I never would wish if I not to have a disability. It's part of who I am. It's part of my character. It's part of my life. I won't change anything not to have a disability. Um, that's, that's how I was born. Um, I was created this way. It's, it's not something, it's real special. And everyone's different. And that's just one part of me, who I am is different. That I have a disability. Besides that, I'm just a regular person, but with a learning disability that you cannot see, but it's there. You know, I really don't consider my disability a disability. I mean, really for me, my only disability is stairs. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm so active, I do so much, I get so involved in so many things that you know, there's so many people that are just blown away because they, they, they're like, you can do that. You can drive. You're able to do everything on your own, you know. If something ever happened to any of your family members and you were on your own, you'd be able to do it. You're not, you know, stuck or not able to do stuff. Your, your mind is perfectly fine. You're able to do as much as anyone else. Probably the best thing is uh, I get to show others who think that their life is over because, you know, they may have gone into the military and one of their legs or arms have blown off and they don't think that they can do it. So with mine, I'm able to show them that I'm able to do it and that they don't have an excuse for wanting to go surfing or dirt biking or, you know, hiking or at least trying to do something that they think would be very, really enjoyable and that they really have no excuse. Because if I'm able to do it, as heck does they could do it too. Have been times where, you know, I, I would have been interested in, you know, what it would feel like having legs. But then as the years go by, you know, I realize that I'm able to do as just as anyone else. You know, just because I don't have legs, it doesn't stop me from trying my hardest and trying my best or trying to like, accomplish a goal that I've set for myself, you know, with driving, getting my license, going out there and doing stuff. You know, it, it's not going to stop me. If I want to do it, I will do it. I want to um, dance for a living and becoming a, a video game, not only developer, but um, um, becoming um, a, a video game with, kind of like that, to at least not just develop games, but to allow other people and combine together so I could create a good business off of that. I didn't get my first job until I was 23, uh, just two years ago. It was a part-time job, and it's doing a ABA therapy with a little boy with autism. And then uh, I also, uh, I currently still do that, and I also have a full-time job too uh, that I just got a year ago. And I struggle, you know, every day with my my jobs. But like I said, I, I usually keep it to myself. But I have an amazing amazing support system at work, and uh, you know, I do need accommodations, obviously. Um, but I will push through anything that I'm not accommodated for. However, my long-term career goal, uh, which is coming to fruition very rapidly, is uh, motivational speaking. I
I did interview the first time. It was great, but when I mentioned I had a disability, they figured they might not want me in that spot the first time. A few months later, a phone call comes from my parents. It was Aero Electronics calling. They said, well, we have a job for him, but we need you to apply for a temp, temp agency. And which I did, I applied, and I worked for a little while, for six months, uh, pick running. And after six months, actually a little longer than that, uh, I got hired on December 24th. And um, tell me that they want me to work for them. And I came a fall era employee December 24th, and I've been there almost four years now. As a pick runner, still doing it. So I had great co-workers. I still have those wonderful co-workers. I had um, bosses come in and go, and uh, things has changed. Uh, my spot has changed over the last few years, and and um, but doing different tasks, and that kept me busy. And I just got raised and. I uh, get the same benefits that anyone else. Since high school, um, I I work with my business, and yeah, I work at some shops like one to a pizza or time runners and bullies. I graduated high school, and I had no desire to go to college at all. I graduated, worked at a restaurant for two or three years, and then I quit. Got had a paying job at a thrift store in Winnemucca. I've been there since 2006, and I have no desire to leave. And it's just the best job I've ever had. I'm a, I know the pay's well, but I'm I, all my coworkers are great friends of mine. I really enjoy being up there. It's really a great place to work. It's a lot of fun. You meet interesting, interesting people. I love interesting, interesting merch, merchandise that comes in, and it's just it's just a lot of fun. My passion really is to travel around the world and share my story with others who have the fear of not being able to get themselves out there and show the world that they are able to do something, even though they pretty much think they don't because there could be someone or several people who give them that negativity of not being able to set a goal for themselves. And so what I want to do is at least become you know, that motivation for them to show them, hey, I don't have legs or I have four fingers and I'm able to, you know, work on a computer, repair drones, I mean, really anything that I set my mind to, and I practice and practice, I'm able to do it. I took online courses uh, at TMCC um, 
due to the fact uh, I had been diagnosed with PTSD from my previous experience with public school. And uh, so I was you know, too afraid to enter a classroom or anything like that. I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life at the time. Um, so I just kind of did it to keep my mind sharp. However, you know, it, the cost of it, you know, not really going towards a degree of any sort um, and having to pay that much money, I decided to drop out and take a second look at my life. And that's uh, when I, you know, stumbled onto, you know, expressing myself, whether it be through writing, poetry, uh, writing song lyrics and or public speaking, which I ultimately uh, came to the conclusion of that I would pursue. Uh, so higher education didn't really play a vital role in my life. I was always, I've always uh, been kind of an autodidact myself, so I always, you know, write it, or read all sorts of um, textbooks on my own. So I, I, because I dropped out of public school after the fifth grade, you know, I had such, you know, I w didn't expect to really get my college degree. And I think I've been through, I've learned enough through life to, to back up what I, I do now without having a college degree. I wound up going to UNR to the Path of Independence program. I, um, I um, possibly um, um, are making progress for my first year of college and, um, and now I'm focused on my future and where I'm going to go now for my future and where uh, my future would be held next. The Path of Independence program has taught me a lot of things about like how like, you know, just take notes, but at least to be more independent. It's really fun to um, be there not only for independence, there's life skills, there's like trying to find a job, and kind of like that was just coming up for me. And um, the, most important, the most important thing is trying to know how um, to live on campus and how to get around for time management, and kind of like that, there's more, that there's a bit more, um, um, a bit more that people should know about, kind of like that, on how to get your classes, where to go, and um, live independently. Back, 
With that being encouraged, I just want to go to college, have experiments of my own, so I can do my own homework on time to catch up. The best thing going to college is wake up and just go to college and learn stuff. I went to the University of Iowa, took a part of a two-year program called REACH, which is stands for Recognizing Career Hopes uh, in edu uh, Education. Um, uh, that took me where I learned uh, community life skills, job skills, uh, money management, independent living skills, uh, and then I got a career focus uh, area in business support. And I got to live on a big tan campus. I got to live in the dorms. Uh, I met a lot of new people. It was mixed people with people with disabilities and people without living on campus, living in the dorms. I went to sporting events. I went for you know, all the football games, basketball. Uh, I joined a group at the university called CAB, uh, Campus Activities Board. And I helped put on activities across the campus uh, for all students. It was for me, um, the University of Iowa very uh, opened their doors for people with disabilities to come to school. I'm now working and living my own, and it's been a wonderful, oh, four or five years of living on my own. I'm at a community college, so it's a lot smaller than a university. So, you know, I'm meeting all kinds of different people from different kinds of backgrounds and just getting involved with um, all these different types of classes from English, um, comic book type classes to ceramics and art, you know, and then being able to do communication classes definitely helps with my public speaking part of my degree. So, you know, it, it's really enjoyable because I get to experience it and it's not costing me a whole bunch of money where I'm in debt. Meeting new people, you know, being able to meet someone who knows nothing about you and being able to explain to them why I'm different, you know, even when they ask and being able to at least tell my story for, you know, what has happened to me over the years and why I don't have legs or why I only have four fingers on each hand. It's really, it's great. I love it. Yeah, I've been in relationships before. Uh, haven't had a lot of friends, and that's okay. But, you know, my family's there for me, and I'm my own best friend. And I'm satisfied uh, being single. I'm satisfied not having a lot of friends. I'm satisfied having a very loving family, and I'm blessed to say that. No matter what, always have lots of fun and always to um, embrace yourself and everybody else in there. I <laughs> Every relationship 
Scarlett Carter is the love of my life. I have a best relationship with him. We never fight, we never break up, we never did. It was an eye, eye, eye to eye. And Scarlett Carter is the most important person in my life. I have a fiance, her name is Amy. She's the nicest, nicest girl you could ask to meet. She's wonderful, she's always happy, and we've been together going on two years. And it's just, it's just we have a lot of fun. We, we go on walks every weekend, and it's just a lot of fun. I enjoy it. We've been together for two years, and we haven't had one fight since we were together. Not one. And I don't, I don't know how many people can say that. Parents, my mother and father, I, they've been helping me over the, since I was born. My sister, um, although she lives in you know, Colorado, uh, I can always go out when mom and dad are not around. Um, my grandmother, although she's older now, she she's still with me. And um, um, but years past, she was part of my. She's still a part of my team. And then my I good good friends. Um, I have a friend, a scout buddy of mine, that I've been um, so since I was in high school. Um, my cousins, although they live out the state, they've been very supportive. Um, and then my coworkers um, at work, they give me a motivation. Um, I have a special coworker at work that that likes me, but also she's a nerve motivation. And then, um, when I was at the University of Iowa, I met my first girlfriend. We connected, and um, and then we've been we had been dating for almost five years. So, but um, then we kept in contact, but we're no longer together. But we're still good friends. I pretty much call my friends Team Steven. And uh, um, some of my teammates came and gone, others came in, and others might leave. And, and, but that doesn't really mean that they're gone for good. That just saying that um, other people might come in into life. And having that strong team got me where I'm here today. I'm a self-advocate. Without them, I won't be able to be a self-advocate. I got the self-advocate award, award um, this last last year in October. And without them, I am not able to exceed that award. And I thank them every time I see a member of my team. Uh, I really have, I'm so thankful for it, for my parents. Um, I'm thankful for the, for the DD Council. The members of the DD Council are always there supporting me and uh, um, they make me laugh, make me s smile and every mean I walk in, um, I, I, uh, I, when I'm supposed to take charge, I take charge and, and, uh, uh, they, they also keep me going. You know, just relationships to me are ones that you can go and call them anytime and they'll be there for you. 
Um, mainly, that would be my best friend Mike. You know, if if I need to call him at two in the morning, he'll he'll answer right away. And we, I had that connection with him where if he needs me, I'm there off the bat. So it's just <laughs> it's really it. So but yeah.